Jaya Jagana, Jaya Jagana, Jaya Baladeva, Jaya Subhadra. Jaya Goranitai, Goranitai, Goranitai. Jaya Gorani Thai Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Srila Prabhupada Go Premanani Hayaribo Jaya Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa for the project Chari Pad it's called BBT Founder Charles of Iron Grace, AC Bhakti Data Swan Maharaj Prabhupada Kijai. Nitya Lila Prabhishta Om Vishnu Padis of Iron Grace, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada Kijai. Ananta Koti Vaisa Ravinda Kijai. Nama Charja Shila Haridas Thakur Kijai. Prem Sikha Hosh Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Did Dhan and the Shia Data Gadha Tara Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakti Vinda Kijai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopanath. Shama Kunda. Radha Kunda. Gira Govardhan Kijai. Shri Raja Bhumi Nama Nama Ki Jai, Shri Nama Dei Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Shri Lala Chal Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Ganga Mayi Ki Jai, Jamuna Mayi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Shmati Tulsa Maharani Ki Jai, Most Beautiful Lord Shri Shukmini Dwarka Dish Ki Jai, Shri Shukmini Dwarka Nath Ki Jai, Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai, Samabeta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai, Going Back to Home, Back to Godhead Ki Jai, Iskon Los Angeles Yatra Ki Jai, Brihad Madanga Chancellor Book Distribution Ki Jai, International Food for Life Transcendental Prasadam Distribution Kijai. Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan Kijai. Nittai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. All glories to the Assembly of devotees. All glories to the Assembly of devotees. All glories to the Assembly of devotees. All glories, all glories to Shri Shri Guru and Gauranga. Glory to Shri Prabhupada. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Deving Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, let us offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of God and Lord Narayan, unto Nar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasa, the author. And unto Srila Prabhupada is a translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashita Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavata Tama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki By regularly attending the Srimad Bhagavatam class and by rendering service unto the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving devotional service unto the personality of God in whose worship the transcendental songs becomes established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're continuing our reading from the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 19, the battle between Lord Bor and the demon Hiranyaksha, and today's verse is 25. Tang mushtibi vrinignantam vadrasaraya adokshataha karena karena mulehan Yatha tastrang morutpatihi Tang mushtibir vinignantam 
Padrasarai Adokshataha Karena Karna Mulehan Yatha to a strong Marut Patihi Tang Mushtibir Venignantam Padrasarai Adokshataha Karena Karna Mulehan Yatha to a strong Marut Patihi Please chant. Adrasarai Adokshataha Yatha Tvastra Tang Mushtimir Minignantam Vadrasara Redokshataha Karena Karna Mulehan Yatha Tvastra Marutpatihi Vaishnavis Tang Mushibir Vinignanta Padrasaira Adokshataha Karena Karna Mulehan Yatatwastang Marut Patihi Tang Mushibir Vinignanta Padrasaira Adokshataha Karena Karna Mulehan Yatha Tvastarang Marut Patihi Okay, see what it is. Tam Hiranyaksha Mushtibihi With his fists Vinignantam Striking Vadrasarai as hard as a thunderbolt. Adokshajaha, Lord Adokshaja, Karena, with the hand, Karnamule, at the root of the ear, Ahan, struck, Yatha, as, Tostram, the demon Vritra, Son of Tvashta. Marut Patihi. Indra, Lord of the Maruts. So, Srila Prabhupada's translation for this verse. The demon now began to strike the Lord with his hard fists, but Lord Adokshaja slapped him in the root of the ear, even as Indra, the Lord of the Maruts, hit the demon Britsar. Please repeat. The demon now began to strike the Lord with his hard fists, 
But Lord Adokshaja slapped him in the root of the ear. Even as Indra, the Lord of the Maruts, hit the demon Vritra. Short purport. Short purport. The Lord is explained here to be Adokshaja, beyond the reach of all material calculation. Akshaja means, quote, the measurement of our senses, end quote. And Adhokshaja means, quote, that which is beyond the measurement of our senses, end of quote. Ma Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamane, Namaste, Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pacharane, Nirvishesha Shunivari Pasha Chadeshtarane. Om Ajnana Timaranda Sya Jnana Njana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtang Shtapitang Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandeya Hang Shri Guru Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Guru Nvaishnamangscha Shri Rupam Sagadatam Sahagana Ragana Tandatam Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Purjana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada and Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitaksha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandho Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haripre Pancha Kopaturubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patita Nang Pabhane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dityananda Shri Adaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So, Prabhupada didn't say much on this verse and I checked the predecessor Acharyas also did not have much to say Krishna Chakrabhati Thakur just gave some definition of a couple of the words in the verse but no additional philosophical points were made. So it's not that the Acharyas can't say, they could speak forever on any one verse, but to keep things succinct, they pick and choose where to expand. So this verse obviously was not worth expanding on, so they didn't expand. From our perspective, we can see that this is, just like we say, everything comes from the absolute. Janmarya Syataha. So this is the original MMA fight. And being completely aware of everything, obviously Krishna is the best MMA fighter. So Lord Bohr knew exactly how to disable this opponent. If you hit somebody in the base of the ear, it does what we say in English, it discombobulates you. Your ears go out of balance. You, you get even the biggest, strongest person, if you hit them hard at the base of the ear, they, they're going to lose their balance. So uh, everybody has um, every material body, especially our type, different points where they're vulnerable. No matter how strong, big and strong you are, there's certain points on the body that are very vulnerable, the eyes. So they teach you if you're a small person being attacked by a large person, if there's some dirt available, you just bend down and throw some dirt in their face. Because no matter how big and strong you are, if you get dirt in your eyes, you can't function, you can't see <laughs> Another vulnerable point is the shin. No matter how big and strong somebody is, if you kick them in their shin, they're going to react, unless they're crazy. <laughs> unless they're crazy, then you get no reaction. One of, the, one of the ways they determine whether somebody is mentally stable or not is if you look in somebody's eyes and they have a lot of eyelashes in there and they're not reacting, then they're crazy. Because a normal person, even one eyelash gets in your eye, you can't wait till you get it out. <laughs> you want to get something, wash your eyes, you ask somebody to take it out. So if you look in somebody's eyes and they have eyelashes swimming in there and they're not reacting, that means they're, they're mentally not, not there. But of course, again, being the Supreme Lord, Lord Rai is completely there. He's completely aware of the situation that has been created by him, the Supreme Lord, to have a good fight, good exhibition, all the demigods are watching. They're in a bit of anxiety. Lord Brahma already earlier told him that Abhijit, that hour is approaching where the demons get stronger, Please take care of him. Of course, the Lord doesn't have to worry about that. But, so he's fighting for his own pleasure, but also for the pleasure of his devotees. Um, from one way or the other, those who know what's going to happen, they're not so concerned like Lord Brahma, although he did ask him to finish it quickly. And those who don't know, they're, 
eager to see the Lord victorious. We always, that's why we say Jai. Jai means victory. Srila Prabhupada ki Jai. Shri Shukmini Dwarkadish ki Jai. So we always want the Lord and the Lord's devotees to be victorious. There's no question of the Lord not being victorious. <laughs> Although sometimes it seems that he's not. Like when he becomes Ranchor, Krishna the Ranchor. After defeating Jarasandha, how many times in a row? 17. 17 times in a row defeated Jarasandha. And he slunk back home and his demoniac advisor said, oh yeah, it's just bad luck. It's just bad luck. Get it together and go try again. Get it together. We also say don't give up. Prophet said never give up on your Krishna conscious, your attempts to become Krishna conscious. It's just like a child learning to walk. Gets up for a few steps, falls down. They got to keep trying. The day will come when they just walk naturally. No more struggle. So in Christian consciousness, we may struggle, but we should never give up. We have to get to the point of victory. Victory means complete surrender to the Lord. Not that I become big and strong like Lord Varaha and I can take on any demon. No. The devotee's not thinking like that. The devotee's always thinking that I want to be under the shelter of not even of the Lord directly, but under the shelter of those who are under the shelter of the Lord. Srila Prophet made that point very emphatically once. He said, you belong to me and I belong to Krishna, therefore you belong to Krishna. Not that we try to belong to Krishna directly. And the same thing goes for all our activities. Preaching. One devotee said to the Prophet, you know, Prophet, when I'm preaching, a Prophet immediately cut him off. What do you mean you're preaching? I'm preaching and you're helping me. So we never put ourselves forward to be big, big preachers. Sometimes we forget that part of the ver famous verse. Nadanam najanam na sundarim kavitam va jagadisha kamai. So nadanam, dana means wealth. I don't want wealth. That doesn't mean if wealth comes like some foolish people, no, I don't touch money. Some people in India are like that. They present they're so pure that if you try to give them money, no, I don't touch money. Papa said, no, give me, give me. Give me. Give me all the money in the world because I know what to do with it. The devotees know what to do with money. So nadanam doesn't mean that if wealth comes, you throw it away. It means you use it properly, not for your own sense gratification. It also means that wealth comes, we don't take foolish risks. Like some devotees, they inherit some money or whatever, and they foolishly invest it in some risky, you know, endeavor to try to increase it. No, Prophet specifically said no to that. The devotees were asking Prophet, you know, uh, gold is hot at the moment. We can maybe buy some gold and make money. Prophet said, no. In other words, when Krishna gives you something, don't play with it. Don't take any risks with it. Put it in a safe investment like a bank. Even if it's 1%, it's better 1% steadily than you take a chance to get 25% or 200% and you lose it all, which happens, has happened so many times over and over again. The devotees get excited. Some new scheme comes along foreign exchange or nowadays Bitcoin and this and that. No, we don't play in the, those markets. Devotees don't play in market. Now, even with money you consider to be your own, which is not really yours, it's Krishna's, what to speak of the temple's money? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If you're a manager of an ISKCON temple and money comes in, there's no question of any risky endeavors. We've seen it happen, unfortunately, in the past. Somebody says, oh, this is a sure bet. This telephone company or this, that, or that. Just put in and lose. Up and down one second happen, avenue, this has happened repeatedly. Individually, collectively, devotees. So don't do that. So Naranam, again, doesn't mean that you don't accept money. No, if Krishna sends money, you accept. Like I said, if Krishna wants to give you, with ten hands you can't hold on to it. So Krishna will sometimes flood us. There are two ways in which we get extreme tests in our, on our bhakti path. One is extreme good everything is good money's flowing like anything your health is good relationships are good tendency is when that happens we start feeling less and less dependent on Krishna we feel like I got it together I have enough in the bank relationships are nice my health is good you know maybe I should plan a trip to Bali or something like that and just you know take a break from Krishna no that's one extreme test and the other extreme test is when everything's falling apart your health is falling apart. You, you have bills to pay. You can't find a cent anywhere. Nobody will lend you any money even. You can't, you just, the natural tendency is if you're a little bit pious, you come in front of Rukmini Dwarkesh and pray, oh my Lord, I'm, I'm really, really getting kicked here. Please help me. 
So sometimes Krishna has to put us in that condition, so we take shelter. Otherwise, but again, when the ex other extreme comes, I've seen so many times, the Bodhi inherits money, takes off the neck beads, throws away the bead bag, and psh, they're gone. So we have to be prepared for both. Most of the time we're somewhere in between. So that's also a test, of, but the extreme test, when they come, always take shelter of Krishna. Now this demon, Hiranyaksha, he's being tested. He's powerful. He can travel from heavenly planets down to the lower planetary systems in an instant. He can throw the earth in the Garbadak ocean. Powerful. So that's another test. Krishna has six, anyway, let me finish the other verse. Let me get back to that. Nananam, Najanam. Jana means followers. I don't want any followers. Sundari, I don't want any beautiful wife or handsome husband. And this is going on. It's not that Lord Chaitanya just said that to throw it out there. It's going on. I, <laughs> one, one spiritual master, my god brother who is a spiritual master, said that one of his male disciples is always on the lookout for the most beautiful girl that he can marry doesn't want to marry any ordinary looking girl. He's always looking out for the most beautiful girl. He's still single. He's still looking for the most beautiful girl that he can find. And he's honest about it. His guru knows about it. But, but that's his motivation. He wants to get married, but it has to be the most beautiful girl that he can find. So Lord Chaitanya said, no. Na sundari. Krishna will make an arrangement. Most of us have been or want, will want to be married. Krishna will make the arrangement. Just like everything else. Come in front of the, these deities are not stone, as Prabhupada was saying yesterday. It's not stone or wood. They hear you. Prophet said right here, Krishna, Dwarkadish is waiting to speak to you. Are you ready? So he, he advised, and I've said this many times because I was there. Prophet said, you come before the disease and say, sir. And that to me, that was like the mind blowing. <laughs> and Prophet suggests that you call the deity sir. But he said, you come before the deity and say, sir, this is my problem. Krishna already knows the problem. But you're establishing a relationship. You're re-establishing a relationship. We always have the relationship. It's always there. It's just like Prophet said, a son, even if he's not getting along with his father, you cannot break that relationship. This one man is your father. You can't break that relationship. No matter whether you get along or you don't get along. That is an established relationship. This person is your father. This person is your mother. You can't break that. So the same thing with the Supreme Lord. You cannot break the relationship with Krishna. You may be aware or not aware, care, don't care. It doesn't matter. That relationship is there. So when we come before Krishna and we say, Sir, dear Rukmini Dwarkadish, I would like to be initiated, but I'm confused about who is my spiritual master. I always advise the bodies like that. They come to me and they say, well, you know, I'm attracted to this guru, I'm attracted to that guru. Go before the deities. Put your plight to them. Please advise me. Please direct me to the person who is the right person to be my spiritual master. So the same thing when you have any health problems, wealth problems. Now, in general, Yes, pure devotees don't bother the Lord with their problems. But we can't pretend if we're not on a platform of pure devotion, we have to reveal our mind to Krishna. This is really bothering me. I can't chant nicely. I can't do my seva nicely. This is bothering me. Reveal to the deities. And they, they're not stone or wood. They will direct us inevitably. Because like a good father, Krishna wants us to be happy. Prophet stated that recently. Krishna wants his offspring to be happy. And he knows everything, he knows everyone, he knows every opportunity, what you should avoid, what you should go for. He will direct you. So, Nadanam, Najanam, Natsunam. Kavi Tamba. This is a part that we always seem to forget. Kavi means learned. So, Kavi Tamba means we don't want to be recognized as being learned. And again, that's a test. Because not everybody's on the same intellectual platform. Some persons, devotee or not devotee, are extremely sharp intellectually. Some are very strong, some are very wealthy. The six opulences that Krishna has. Aishwarya, Samagrasya, Viryasa, Yashashak, Kriya. Jnana Vairaga Yoshara, Shannam Bhaga Itingana. Parashramuni gave us that verse. So we are tested by all of those opulences of Krishna. Sometimes we'll have more money than others. Sometimes we'll have more health, but we're stronger, we're more famous, whatever. Whatever level of those opulences you have must be employed in Krishna's service, otherwise it becomes a burden. You get wealth, and you don't use it properly in Krishna's service, it becomes a burden. Everybody's after it. 
or you think like that, everybody's after it. Every time the phone rings, you wonder, who is this? What should I, should I answer? Should I not answer? And you make sure that you see the name. And if you don't see a name, if it says unknown, forget it. I'm not going to answer. You become fearful. And it's natural because this is a fearful place that we're living in. It's not a nice place. Don't try to dress it up. That's what the non-devotees do. We don't try to dress it up. That everything is okay. I'm okay. You're okay. The world is okay. It's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. And Prabhupada made that point emphatically in Mayapur once when some members of some other spiritual path came to see him and they wanted him to participate in some conference to promote, you know, spirituality, this, everything is all right. Prophet said, no, it's not all right. He said, if you want to decorate the bathroom, make it look nice, it's still a bathroom. <laughs> doesn't matter. So this material world is the outhouse. It's an outhouse, and it doesn't matter how you dress it up. It remains an outhouse. So that, how can the devotees be happy? Vishram Purna Sakayate, Vidhi Mahindra Adi Sakintai. Promoted on the Saraswati. Vishwam Purna Sakaiti, those who are actually devotees of the Lord, they see the whole world as being full of happiness. Vishwam Purna Sukayati, Sukha means happiness. They see the world as a happy place. Why? Yakkaruna Kataksha Vaibhavatam Tam Goram Eva Stumak. This is one of the indicators that one has received the mercy, full sidelong glance of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya. And his followers, they were always happy, joyful. And the caste brahmanas, so-called Hindus at the time, 500 years ago, they couldn't understand. Who are these crazy guys? They see each other, they hug each other, they roll on the ground, they cry. Who are they? They're just crazy. They're nuts. Because in their, you know, lineage, you have to be serious. Om Swaha, da, da, da. That's, that's their idea. So for devotees to display all this happiness, like last night we were out on Sankirtan, on the promenade. Devotees are naturally happy, dancing, running back and forth, and other people are attracted. They come, they join, they run around in the circle. Because that's our natural position, to be happily chanting, hearing and chanting about the Lord. We're not faking it. It's not like we go out there and put on a show. Okay, now it's your turn to smile. And, no. It's just natural. We smile naturally. We chant happily. Because it's natural. It's unnatural. That's why my god brother Dev Swami has a book, Hiding in Unnatural Happiness. People are trying to find happiness in unnatural ways. And therefore they remain unhappy. For some time they may ha 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 he 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 and then again. Like they say, there's no more depressed person than a comedian. They come out on stage, they make people laugh, da da da, tell this joke, Pratt falls, whatever, and then after the curtain comes down, depressed. Because that's the nature of this place. It's a depressing place. And therefore we want it's a place full of anxiety. And therefore we don't want to get to this point of Hiranyaksha where we see the Lord as an enemy. So I just wanted to read something spoken by Hiranyaksha's nephew, Prahlad. So Prahlad was a pure devotee. So he says, this is in the seventh canto, chapter five. Saishat ma saparita buddhibir durate yanu kamano rupate. Uyanti yat bart mani beda vadi no pramajo yaisha binati me matim. So he says, persons who always think in terms of enemy and friend are unable to ascertain the super soul within themselves. Not to speak of them, even such exalted persons as Lord Brahma, who are fully conversant with the Vedic literature, are sometimes bewildered in following the principles of devotional service. The same Supreme Personality of Godhead who has created this situation has certainly given me the intelligence to take the side of your so-called enemy. So Prahlad knew where his power was coming from, where his intelligence is coming from, is coming from Krishna. Short purport, Prophet says, Pallad Maharaj, <coughs> excuse me. Pallad Maharaj admitted frankly, quote, My dear teachers, who were the teachers? Sanda and Amarka. 
My dear teachers, you wrongly think that Lord Vishnu is your enemy. But because he is favorable toward me, I understand that he is the friend of everyone. You may think that I have taken the side of your enemy, but factually, he has bestowed a great favor upon me. So Prahlad was not thinking in terms of friends and enemies. His uncle, Hiranyaksha, saw the Supreme Lord as an enemy. He thought his elder brother, Hiranyakashipu, was his friend, and together they're going to conquer everyone, including Vishnu. It's, it's really strange because, you know, his father is Kashyapamuni, and the same father gives birth to other co-wives. Diti is the mother of the demons. Other co-wives like Aditi, he gave birth to higher personalities, demigods. So it's amazing that the son of such a father can be so bewildered. So that means completely covered by the material energy. And that's the point I was trying to make yesterday and during that question and answer period. When we fall into this material world, we can become so covered, there's no way you can figure it out. You can't figure it out yourself. Not by your intellectual prowess. Krishna says that later on in 11th Canto, that by your ascending process of intellectualizing, Shabda Brahmani Nishnato, Nanishayat Parayadi. Shamastasya Shamapalo Hyadenum Ibarakshata. Krishna says, Shabda Brahmani Nishtata. If you rise up high with your intellect to the point where you think you understand Shabda Brahman, which means sounds coming from the spiritual world. Nanishnaya Parayadi, but you don't have any regard for the Supreme Lord, who is the source of that, source of Brahman Parapatma, and of course he's the Supreme Lord. Personality, I've got it. Then, Parsat Shamapalo. It's just like you're, you're wasting your time. There's no fruit. There's Pala means fruit. There's no fruit. Hiyadenum Ivarakshat. It's just like nicely keeping a cow that gives no milk. The whole point of keeping cows is not just altruism or, you know, we're being. No, we want to get the milk, as it was discussed the other day, that milk is liquid love. And if you, you can read up, there are so many uh, places in the Vedas where the cow is eulogized, is uh, glorified. Um, and that's Krishna's arrangement, because Krishna's home planet is Goloka, where there's oceans of milk. And the Lord is attending the cows as sport. He doesn't have to do it. It's not that his, it's business that he has to make money. Well, that just shows you how important cow is as an entity. And even when he comes to this world to display his pastimes, there's Goloka and there's Gokula. There are some differences. Um, one difference that's discussed and maybe not clearly understood, and I'm at myself right now, I'm reading up some commentaries of the Acharyas on this point, is this Baal Krishna pastime, Damodar Lila that we're glorifying every day and participating in, does that exist in Goloka? Krishna is eternally existing in Goloka in its youthful form, we know that for sure, but does this, the baby form, exist? So some say, well, how would Mother Yashoda sure be satisfied? She's a mother, she has to have, but with, then which baby Krishna does she have? The baby Krishna at birth, the one that's a few months old that killed Putana, a few months older killing Trinavarta, or five-year-old Krishna who's taking out the you know, that's what I'm, where, which, where where does it stop? What we do know is that the parental mood doesn't change even when the child gets older. Materially, we see that even. But with Krishna, Krishna was taken away from Devaki and Vasudev, taken to Vrindavan. And then later on, many years later, when Devaki saw her sons again, her breast was overflowing with milk. They were not at that point drinking milk from their mother's breast. But the, the parental mood doesn't go away. It's not that because the child is now in, in a teen form that the mother doesn't feel like she's a mother anymore. And if you say, no, but it has to be, ch then which child form? Which child form would it be? The one that's just there at birth when she wakes up out of her stupor of childbirth and she's not even sure whether she gave birth to a male child or a female child? So is it that form that she'll be meditating on internally? Or, or again, the one that's a few more months older, kills Putana or, a few, you know, which form? Or all of them? So I'm trying to get to the bottom of that myself. There are some commentaries by Jiva Goswami and others. 
But suffice it to say, there are certain things that happen in Gokula that don't happen in Goloka. Just like Krishna is not killing, here we have Varaha killing Iran Yaksha, but he's not killing Keshi in Goloka. Prophet says there are rumors of demons in Goloka, but there are no actual demons there. There's, that's why the Lord had to arrange a fight here, because there's no fighting of that type going on in Goloka. So we should never feel complacent about our knowledge. There is so much knowledge to be gained on the path of bhakti that we should always be eager to hear, but we have to hear from the right source. Do not ask questions just to hear yourself ask a question. We should only question when we really have genuine need to know. And when we have a genuine need to know something, we should approach somebody whose answer we're willing to accept. Don't just ask Bhakta Burpee, you know, what does Bhakta Burpee know about what goes on in Goloka? So find a person whose level of Krishna consciousness is high enough that you will be willing to accept their answer. Otherwise, and it's the same thing with problems. If you have problems, don't go around throwing it on everybody's table. Ask somebody whose advice you're willing to take. Otherwise, it's just another way of being self-centered. I go to everybody in the community and tell them I have this problem, this problem, this problem, just to keep me in the center. Not that I really want the problem to be solved. If I have a problem that really needs a solution, it's urgent, then you find somebody, your guru or some other senior personality whose advice you're going to take. Otherwise, don't disturb the devotees. So sometimes we get into this mood of asking questions just for the sake of asking questions. And this community in New Dwarka became famous for that, back even in, back in the 70s, 80s. And a lot of speakers were afraid to come here and give class because New Dwarka devotees were known for asking stump the Swami questions. Some Swami comes to give class and the devotees are already prepared to ask some question that's going to trip him that he can't even answer or he's going to have a hard time. So no, that's not the reason for asking questions. We don't want to stump the Swami. We should ask questions when we genuinely need to have the answer. Not that I have something on my mind and I want everybody else to think about it, so I ask a question just to get it out in the forum. Prabhupada is not into that. So if we see from Prabhupada's example, in early days, 66, 67, etc., even up to when I joined, 73, Prabhupada at the end of class would quite often ask for questions. Brigapati knows. He, he was that famous situation with Brigapati where Prabhupada asked for any questions and nobody was asking. So Brigapati got frustrated and he threw out a question to Prabhupada. But after that, by the time I came here in 75, Prabhupada was giving class every day when I was here because it was that marathon. He stopped asking for questions because the devotees were asking foolish questions. So Prabhupada stopped asking. So you see, Prabhupada, he would come in, he would greet the deities, then there would be Guru Puja, then he would sit down and give class. And then at the end of class, there will be another kirtan, no questions. So I just want to throw that out because I noticed that we're sliding again into that mentality of asking questions just because I want to be heard and I want to bring up something that everybody should think about. That's not what Bhagavatam class questions are meant for. At the end of class, you ask a question related to this topic that you're probably not clear about. That's what. So on that note, I'm not going to take any questions. <laughs> I have, I have a, uh, not just because I don't want you to ask anything, but I have a program in Simi Valley. I have to get ready and get out there. So, Rantaraj Shimir Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Kijai.